Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18's Mumbai Newsroom. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me as always is Pautra Parikh. You're watching MF Corner. Today we are going to decode the mutual fund data for the month of September that came out just yesterday. In fact, SIP inflows, they scaled record high this time, more than 16,000 crore rupees. And ETF contributions also double, but outflows in large caps, they have ebbed. Debt funds and credit funds, they continue to see outflows. So, a lot of data that we need to break down today. And for exactly that, we have <laughs> Mohit Gang here in the studios with us. Mohit, it's always a pleasure to have you here. So, thank you for coming down to the studios. And like Sonal was pointing out, a lot of highlights coming through from the mutual fund data. What stood out to you and what do you think of this record high SIP contribution? Over 16,000 crores. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't too long ago, right? That we were at about 3,000, 4,000, maybe 5, 6 years ago. Totally, totally. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Sonal and Pavitra. Always a pleasure. Uh, look, I think uh, the story of Indian mutual fund is the story and the power of retail individual investor. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I think the revolution is massive. Uh, if you see the month-on-month -month growth in terms of numbers, not just equity flows, the SIP numbers, the folio counts, the unique investor count, I think everything is just bustling out of the roof. Yeah. And just to give perspective on that, 2021 Jan, the SIP amount per month was 8,000 yeah. crore. At that time, the country was celebrating. It was a massive number, a massive achievement. <laughs> yeah. And today, three years down the line, we are at 16,000 crore, which is $2 billion a month, yeah. right? So, which is like almost 24, 25 billion dollars a year, which is a which is a huge number and can take care of FII flows to a, <laughs> to a large extent, right? And that's why I call it, it is a domestic retail revolution which is in making. Okay, oh, it absolutely is and you know, uh, that's why whenever we put out something around mutual fund queries and retail investor participation, there's so much, people have so many questions about mutual fund investing, so that's uh, great to see. Uh, but you know, uh, while SIPs are good, we did see some decline in debt flows this time, liquid funds as well. Was this just the seasonal thing? How are you looking at these two categories? Look, so obviously you have some give and take across uh, different categories. Uh, so on the debt side, per se, what is happening is September, any which ways is a fairly high month because of corporate uh, tax payouts, right? Yeah. So corporates redeemed quite a lot. And the massive outflow you see across the liquid and the ultra short debt category is primarily owing to uh, corporate tax payments, mm -hmm. right? So the, I think the category is uh, negative some 66,000 odd crores uh, on the whole put together. But if you see interesting corners in debt, you see the guilt category. Mm. Uh, it's a category for very savvy investors, category for investors who really want to pay the interest rate cycle. That category has been positive for last two, three months put together. It's a very minuscule amount, but they have been receiving uh, flows, right? So across debt, but other categories look also because of the taxation. Uh, mm. Now, because your indexation benefit has gone off. So what most of the retail individual investors who were invested in debt are doing is they're moving to categories like arbitrage. So you see huge flows in arbitrage category. They're moving to categories. Yep, multi asset, equity savings, those kind of categories are seeing uh, flows just because of the tax arbitrage part mm. of it. Corporates obviously can't move uh, lock, stock and barrel yeah. into these categories because their mandates are not to invest in equities, but retail individuals who are investing in debt are uh, moving into these kind of categories. Okay. Mm. Okay, uh, there is a lot that we want to talk to you about those more tax efficient funds as well. I'll get to that in just a bit. But take us through what you think on these credit funds because you know the outflows have continued and pretty much at that same level for a while now. What do you think about this space? Look, honestly, Pavitra, I think that's a bit surprising to me. Uh, I don't see a massive reason for an investor in debt category right now to come out of uh, credit funds. Uh, I think uh, there has not been any big significant blowout event on the credit side uh, in our country for last whatever one or two years. Uh, credit cycle, though you can always argue that the interest rate cycle is at peak and you might see credit events happening at the lower strata uh, of the corporate ladder, but that's that's not actually happening, right? So it's not that, and the fund houses are also now restricted as per SEBI mandate, they don't go significantly below the credit ladder. So I, I still can't understand and fathom as to why someone should come out of credit funds and the only reason why I think is perhaps money is moving into arbitrage and equity savings category mm. just because of the tax mm. part. Otherwise, on the return front, in terms of the profile of the funds, I think the funds are great to stay put with. Okay. So, you know, the other <coughs> highlight was that NFOs continue. No matter how deep our market <laughs> is, how many categories we have, <coughs> every other day, one of the fund houses will come up with an NFO. Yes, this yes. time around, it was around 7,800 crore rupees. But largely, uh, it was led by one category. It was multi-asset funds. We are seeing a lot of advertisement around multi-asset funds as well. So, what, are, what is your take is it something that an investor should look at one once it comes to the balanced approach or you think okay in different categories that would make more sense 
Look, in some ways, the the story of mutual funds in India is also the story like an uh, FMCG firm. What is out there on the shelf, जो दिखता है वो मिलता है और जो मिलता है वो बिकता है, right? So that's the that's the whole cash line out there, and uh, that also happens with mutual funds. Should start asking me what are your ads spends like? <laughs> you know, like how we ask these FMCG companies. No, companies. fund houses make extra effort to reach out uh, to distributors. Distributors <coughs> make that extra effort to take that NFO, that theme. That theme must have been repeated. some myriad amount of times but it doesn't matter people think is as a new theme new idea new concept and people lap it up and that's the that's uh, in a way a sad part of the overall uh, ecosystem but that's how the system works right uh, on the multi asset side it's a great category no two doubts about it if someone wants a flavor of equity debt commodities all three put together and now what different fund houses are doing it they're mixing it up in different ways someone is saying i'll keep commodities at 10% someone is saying i'll put reits and invits in it someone is saying i'll mm. take commodities higher and i'll keep debt lesser and and whatever some different variants and formats of it so it's it's a good dish to have in your plate uh, but i'm not sure whether that should be like the largest dish on your plate uh, mm. honestly i still think one sad part is that large cap categories are seeing outflows and i think uh, personally that it is time that investors again believe in the power of large caps and start moving in more monies towards large caps so that okay. that i think is not happening right now okay so just one follow up if this dish is served in the name of multi asset funds should they go ahead and eat it if you don't have it on your platter uh yes by all means have it as part of your diversification and mm. overall portfolio but if you have it you don't have to have it from all fund houses and you don't have to like really go overboard it yeah also, also as long as it doesn't sort of tilt your portfolio on i mean if you already have a large cap or you know a lot of equity funds then this perhaps needs to be kept in mind if uh, what kind totally, of allocation totally look so there are many investors who would keep equity and debt totally separate yeah. and they would treat them as separate categories and not try and mix it and match mm. it up right uh, if you are in that uh, 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 category you might as well continue doing that and keep equity and debt separate but there are uh, a set of investors who think diversification and asset allocation is best left to a fund manager mm. and it's not my prerogative so i as an investor will give the money to a fund manager and let him put across equity and debt mm. and manage it so if you are in that category or if you are a different risk profile uh, uh, client or if you have a different type of goals perhaps maybe you have that multi asset but otherwise i think having equity and debt separate is is good right. enough in any portfolio okay got that and uh, you know the other space mohit which has been seeing inflows rise month after month is of course the hybrid funds uh, i think it came in at over 18000 crores this time as well do you think this is a pocket that will continue to to see a lot of money coming in considering that there have been these tax changes and it is a more tax efficient category Oh, definitely, Pavitra. Look, tax efficiency is one part of it, which I think obviously investors like, mm -hmm. uh, and that gives you the advantage of equity taxation. Mostly hybrid funds, the aggressive hybrid yeah. funds, and the other hybrid categories will give you that equity taxation. If not, they will give you the indexation uh, benefit right. if they are in a, a, a category which is in lower equity composition, right? Uh, but my sense is again for investors who don't want to take their own asset allocation call, then obviously this category. merits attention and they should by all means go and do this because this is an auto asset allocator kind of a thing where fund manager is taking that call maybe he is doing it fundamentally on some valuation matrices of the market or maybe he is doing on some other factors which are inbuilt in the fund but if you can by yourselves or with the help of your advisors manage your own equity and debt separately mm. then i think that's mm. a better approach to be taken Okay, so you know something interesting that you mentioned that you're sad that large caps are still seeing oh, outflows, totally, totally. Uh, but they've <clears> ebbed. <throat> so that is some breather that has come by. And small caps and uh, mid caps, which continue to see record high flows month by month, there also the inflows have ebbed now. How should one look at these three segments? Look, Sonal, I've always maintained that bulk of any investor's portfolio, whatever be your risk profile, you could be the most aggressive okay. investor on planet Earth, but the bulk of your portfolio has to be in large caps. Mm -hmm. those are like those finally it is equity right mm. but those are time tested companies those are the largest names available in the market those have gone through the ebbs and flows of markets and they will withstand that flow and they will withstand that volatility when time comes right the problem is we haven't seen a very significant correction in indian markets and for last one two years the returns have been magnificent on the small and mid cap side and and people are just lapping it up by looking at last one two year returns by all means buy small and mid caps buy it as per your asset allocation keep it limited to 10% 20% of your overall portfolio but large caps have to be the chunkiest composition of your portfolio which is at least 50% if not more mm. right so i think that stability factor somehow i think investors 
perhaps a market correction will teach them that or something else but i think large caps will again bounce back pretty soon and i think on the valuation side also it is making a compelling case as against mid and small caps today mm -hmm. i think it deserves merit and people mm -hmm. should start entering large caps again maybe i mean this time there was only <laughs> around 110 crore outflow so yeah. maybe you know we will see that pick up hopefully, hopefully. Uh, you know people watching the show might listen to you but one final question uh, mohit what do you think of this entire sectoral and thematic fund category because that is also seen a lot of money coming in a lot of the nfos that sonal was talking about have been in this space i mean also because it is one of the few options that you know fund houses can keep looking at new okay. themes new sectors to launch nfos do you think this space will continue to attract this kind of money Look, I think again that shelf uh, analogy works mm -hmm. here. What is available, what sees, uh, what catches your fancy and attention deserves uh, or whatever uh, kind of pulls the investors towards it. But look, honestly, uh, for me, if a fund manager can take that call, which sector is doing well, which theme is doing well, which market cap is doing well, I'll rather give my money to a fund manager and let him do his job and not try and uh, put my brains behind it because entering in is easy. Mm -hmm. But taking a timely exit out of sectors and themes mm -hmm. is extremely difficult, honestly. And times have proved it multiple amount of, as in history has proved it multiple yeah. times that you can't really time your exit to perfection in these categories. So I'll rather let the fund manager do this. But if you really find a theme which is extremely fascinating and you are aware of that theme and you, you really know or you believe in the future prospects of that theme, then by all means, put some money, but put your casino money in it. <laughs> Don't put your strategic allocation, put your tactical allocation, which is your play money or side money, which you always will keep some allocation there. As portfolio allocators, we always tell clients that you have a strategic and have a tactical allocation. So go into sectors and themes with your tactical allocation, which is a different part of money, if you really want to. Let's hope that casino money doesn't get taxed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Gaming is getting taxed now. But Mohit, always a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you so much for joining us today and decoding this AMP data. Record high SIPs. Absolutely. So let's see what the next month has to offer. But on that note, we'll take a quick break. On the other side, Harshwandar Runta of Runta Securities will join us to answer all your MF queries. We have a lot of them, so stay tuned.
Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into MF Corner here on CNBC TV 18. And now we're going to get to a whole lot of queries that you guys have sent to us and you want answered. We have Harshad and Rumta here in the studios. It's always uh, nice to have you here. So thank you for taking out the time for all of these queries that have come in. And like Sonal was, you know, mentioning earlier as well, we get a lot of these. So the first one I'm going to get to it straight away is from Shailesh Singh. Now he's written in from Ahmedabad. He says he's looking to invest in the Nifty 50 index fund for large cap portion of his portfolio. He asks if he can invest in the simple Nifty 50 index fund or Nifty 50 equal weight index fund. Now he's asking which among the SBI and UTI for Nifty and uh, the D. ESP and HDFC for Nifty equal weight fund are better for him. So what would you advise on this question? So, so in fact, uh, Pavita, it's a very good question because, you know, the equal weight index has not been really spoken about much. Uh, so the first uh, thing that let's clarify to him is that he's been asking for two index funds, which is Nifty 50, tracking the Nifty 50 and two equal weight. So the first thing, if, whichever he eventually lands up investing into the Nifty 50 or equal weight, just pick one scheme mm, of the right. category. You don't need two index funds mm. because they perform the same. I mean, they're going to replicate the index in any ways. Yeah. Okay. So before we get into which is better, you know, just a little bit of what is a Nifty 50 equal weight and what is Nifty 50. You just have mm. to primary comparison. So uh, if you look at Nifty 50 index, so that's basically what a 50 co companies yeah. basket. And each company will have a different weightage. Say, for example, HDFC Bank has about 13.7%, TCS will have 4%, and Power, Power Grid has 1% allocation mm -hmm. in that Nifty 50. Now, if you look at a Nifty 50 equal weight, so all the three companies that we spoke about mm. will, will have 2% each. So all the 50 companies will have 2% weightage. So that's mm. the primary difference. Yeah. Mm. Now, if you look at some comparisons, okay? So if you see the top 10 companies that form a part of the Nifty 50, uh, you know, the weightage of the only the top 10 companies about 60%. Yeah. So the balance 40 companies, uh, you know, comprise for only 40%, 40%. overall. Mm -hmm. If you look at a Nifty 50 equal weight in this context, now the top 10 companies will have 20% mm -hmm. weightage. If you look at sector uh, concentration, so the financial services in a Nifty 50 has about 35% weightage. Mm -hmm. And that's only just one sector. Yeah. And if you look at the equal weight, that will come down to again about mm -hmm. 18 to 20%. Mm -hmm. So, of course, a better diversification. Now, in terms of performance, because that's something that eventually an investor will be uh, wanting to track, which performs better in different market cycles. Mm. So when the markets go down, you know, we've seen, if you just back test the data, we've seen that the equal weight tends to you know, protect the downside better than the, uh, than the Nifty 50 yeah. uh, index. For a simple reason, because the allocations are higher in each stock. So yeah. if something <coughs> falls, then you have a larger fall. And in case when the markets go up, so in the bull run in that sense, yeah. The performance has been mixed, so mm -hmm. you can't really point out to say the which has done better. But you know, if you take the numbers, they're slightly tilted towards the equal weight, saying that equal weight does outperform even in case of markets go up mm -hmm. and protects the downside better. Mm -hmm. So uh, because uh, Mr. Singh is asking the specific question and he can track between the two, because we know normally we what we say that you know if you don't want to apply your brains, don't want to track anything, just yeah. simply buy an index. Yeah. But in this also we started getting variations. <laughs> yeah. So for a layman investor, I would say just take the index and you know continue with it. I the nifty 50 mm. but because he understands the difference and he's been exploring between the two i would say that the odds are more in favor of the equal weight so in this case yes of course he should choose the equal weight uh, more particularly for this particular investor and the names that he's picked up i think an hdfc nifty 50 equal weight is a good option okay that's uh, an interesting question and a very helpful answer uh, because between the two it's again a difficult choice to make so uh, let's go to the next query that we have rahul thakkar is writing to us from new delhi he has been investing 3 lakh rupees per month for over 10 years in funds such as parag parik flexi mire blue chip axis mid cap Kotak Emerging Equity, Nippon Small Cap and SBI Small Cap Fund. He asks if he needs to tweak his portfolio. Well, uh, that's the complete laydown of what he is and where he is investing. What would you suggest him? So, Sonal, you know, if you look at the query, so we can get an investor profile, yeah. you know, primarily, broadly, we can understand what an investor does. So he's very, you know, very smartly picked up uh, funds from different categories. Yeah. The allocations are good. So he's pointed that out. So he's well aware. I mean, he knows what he's kind of doing. So and overall, my uh, observation would be that the schemes are fine. You don't really need to do anything otherwise. Mm. However, still, if there is some room for doing something, <laughs> yeah. there is one suggestion or rather two suggestions that I can give to him. 
uh, though I may, I want to reiterate that there is nothing alarming. So mm. in case he doesn't wish to make any changes, he can continue. Mm. However, if there is some thing that he can incorporate, this is, these are the two things. One, he has a Mirai uh, blue chip fund, it's a large cap fund. Mm. Now in the large cap category, we've seen, again the back testing data, that index funds tend to perform better than the actively managed mm. funds. So in, now if you are in a large cap category, Mirai is a good fund, no mm. doubt on that part. But going further, we're going to see challenges where well, active fund managers might find it difficult to beat the index. Mm. So uh, that is one change that he can do in place of Mirai Blue Chip. He could include an ICSA Pro, uh, the BSE Sensex fund. Okay. The other, uh, in the mid cap category, he has two active ma active, uh, actively managed funds. Now, it would be a smart thing to do. I mean, if you're looking at betting at the fund manager's capabilities, you have one active fund and take another one because you have mm -hmm. two in any case. Take the other one to be a passive index fund. Mm -hmm. So you have both the flavor yeah. of both, the active and the passive. In case the fund manager does not do well, at least you're getting what the mid-cap index mm -hmm. would do. So in case he wishes to make that change, uh, he could retain the Kotak Emerging Equity as an active fund. And the change that he can do is add an ABSL uh, Nifty mid-cap 50 index fund okay. in place of the Axis mid-cap. Okay, so those are some suggestions for uh, Rahul. I hope that helps. The next query comes in from Ambod Chakravarti, who writes in to us from Navi Mumbai. Now, he says he wants to invest in mutual funds via the SIP route, and his target is to generate 1 crore rupees in a time period of around 10 years. So, how much does he need to invest? Uh, if you can take us through that, also if a step up SIP is something that he can consider. Okay, so uh, step up, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, step up is a wonderful tool. I yeah. mean, the, the magic that it can do over a period of time is unimaginable. Mm. So we don't we don't understand the power of that small step up yeah. that we do, uh, but nevertheless, so if we don't want to get into the numbers, but uh, more or less, if you assume that the overall return over the next decade would be about 10 to 12 percent on his portfolio, mm. then he needs to invest about 40 to 50 thousand per month. So that's the amount. Yeah. In case he opts for a step up, then it could be a lo lower amount right now, and then yeah. possibly increase it over a period of time. So 10 to 12 percent assumption, uh, an investment about 40 to 50. Now, how do you divide this? Uh, uh, and, and his question was, should I go into equity or not? And all those things. So, you know, look, you're investing through SIP. You have a 10-year time horizon. You must take the benefit of equity, yeah. you know, I mean, <coughs> investing. So he can, yeah, of course, create the portfolio with equity schemes. And the schemes, uh, how do you divide it? If you're taking a 50,000 per month, I could give him five schemes. So equally 10,000 in each of them. Uh, Parag Parik Flexi Cap, uh, Kotak Emerging Equity, SBI Contra, ICICI approved multi-cap and uh, Motila Lowe's fund, NASDAQ 100 fund of fund. So that also has an international uh, mm. exposure to his portfolio. Okay, there you go, Mr. Chakrabarti. You have your portfolio uh, you designed, know, designed you. there for you. But going on to the next query, Jayesh Desai is writing to us from Surat. He asks if we can invest a big amount in HDFC balance advantage fund, dividend option, or invest in various diversified funds. So that's a very specific query here. So, you know, uh, Sonal, he did mention that he's also a retired individual. Yeah. Okay, mm. so... Uh, and he said, there's a big amount I want to invest. Mm -hmm. So so what is that big amount? Unless we know the amount mm -hmm. under consideration, mm -hmm. it's difficult to say whether one scheme is good or not. Mm -hmm. So some people, you know, 10 lakhs may be a very big amount, but a scheme can easily absorb 10 lakhs in one scheme, and that's fine. Yeah. Unless you're talking about a crore and plus, mm -hmm. uh, and that again is subjective. I mean, somebody may say that I can invest 50 lakhs or one crore in one scheme, one fund manager, I'm happy. And somebody say, may say that even 10 lakhs, I want to divide into five different fund houses. So I think it's a very subjective question. Nevertheless, I can give a generic answer. Mm -hmm. It's a retirement corpus he's talking about. So I'm reasonably sure that there'll be, it'll be reasonably large. Mm -hmm. Okay, we don't know the numbers. Yeah. And, uh, but in any case, it's not wise to have a focused and just take one scheme. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot just put everything in one scheme. Every fund house, every fund manager goes through the cycles. At one point, we've seen Access was doing extremely well. Yeah. Right, and now last couple of years have been very painful for Access. Mm -hmm. So this is a cycle. So you cannot just put all your money into just one scheme. In fact, I would say you would even want to diversify across different fund houses. Mm. So divide this money, uh, uh, you know, Mr. Desai, into uh, different schemes and different fund houses so that you will have a balance. And somebody may outperform at <coughs> some time, somebody may underperform, some scheme may do well, etc. You will have a good mix of all. All right, that's very helpful advice. And Harshvardhan, we're going to wind down on that note. But thank you for taking us through all of these various queries that have come in. I hope that helps everyone who has written into us with their queries. For now, it's a wrap on this edition of Mutual Fund Corner. But stay tuned because we have Closing Bell up next for the final hour of trade today.